And I, who came from Miami, can tell you that it was very difficult for anyone to dare to make uh, any comment which could be interpreted as even the least bit pro-Cuban in this society. You could be killed for that. I myself participated in a pacifist peace dem demonstration in 1963, and we were attacked by exiled Cubans. And this has gone on and on and on. I mean, this is not, nothing new. So they asked for a change of venue, which is normally something that you can argue. And the government argued against it, and the judge decided that, no, it was quite possible to have a fair, impartial trial in Miami. But you know, in America, you have the jury system. So that means that you must find jurors who will not be affected by this atmosphere. And they claim that they found such people, but this is just nonsense. And, uh, and in fact, all they asked was that the trial be moved 50 miles north to the court in Fort Lauderdale, which is the next city after Miami. So it wouldn't have been any big inconvenience for anyone to hold the trial there. But the experience was that in Fort Lauderdale, the effect of this massive anti-Castro sentiment was not as strong, and it would be possible to find a jury to give a proper, a, a decent, fair trial. And in addition, that there wouldn't be all these demonstrations. I mean, now this, uh, this little film that we saw doesn't show anything of the reality of the trial, but there were demonstrations outside the, the courthouse every single day. This trial was going on for a long time. Uh, the jurors were constantly being photographed, and even the license plate number on their cars was being photographed, which is direct intimidation of the people who were then supposed to sit and, and take a position on the guilt of these people. The trial itself, there's not so much to say. We, we could say that the, there is a real problem in the fact that the, the evidence pre presented was extremely weak from the point of view of just weighing it. I'm not going to put myself instead of this uh, judge and jury but uh, all of the commentaries from serious lawyers after this case have argued that the evidence produced. For instance, uh, you pointed out already that they changed the charge to conspiracy to commit uh, uh, some kind of uh, spying on, on the United States. But there was never any evidence, serious evidence of any kind presented that would demonstrate that, that, that this was the case. Also, in the case of Hernandez, uh, the only evidence against him, and he was convicted of more or less uh, helping to murder these pilots who were shot down by the Cuban Air Force. There were two communications, one before uh, where the Cuban uh, uh, security services told him that none of our people should fly on these planes during the next few days. Okay. And then afterwards, uh, a message saying that uh, we commend you for the good work you've been doing after these plans have been shot down. But the court felt that this proved that he was somehow implicit in the actual shooting down of these planes and the, thus the deaths of these counter-revolutionary uh, people, exiled Cubans, which is a bit far-fetched. I mean, most uh, there, there's, there are many legal opinions which even one of, from the Court of Appeals, which questions this whole method of reason. But let's leave that aside. So number one, already in the pretrial situation, they did not have uh, the possibility to have a, an adequate defense, to prepare their defense properly, and they were not given a fair trial at the time of the trial. There was not, as we say, either equality of arms, which is an important concept of this treaty, the ICCPR, in that they, they, they hadn't the, the means to present a complete defense. And it's interesting that when they appealed, a three-judge panel in the Court of Appeals upheld their appeal and said that the trial had to be redone. 
and moved to another place, that it was impossible to get a fair trial in Miami. And Bush's attorney general then demanded that uh, they appeal this decision to the complete appeal court, and it was voted down. A completely political, I mean, this is, this is a question of political, a political trial, a Dreyfus type of trial, where the, the, the motives for doing this were political. I will end only by saying the following. In their defense, the five did not deny, in fact, that they had worked for the Cuban government, but they made it quite clear that their only goal and their only intent was to give information to the Cuban government to stop terrorist attacks on Cuba. And remember, this is at precisely the time that the United States declared its own war on terrorism. So these, these brave men, I say they're brave because they admitted to what they had, they said that our only activities were looking at the activity of the terrorists anti-Castro, anti-communist exile groups in Miami to inform the Cuban government. Also, it was cl quite clear in conversations between the Cuban government and the FBI in 1998 that the Cuban, Cuban government had admitted to the FBI that they had such agents in the United States with precisely this goal. So there was no secret. I mean, the Cubans didn't deny that they were trying to protect their country. Mm -hmm. And this was diplomatically admitted, and even they even informed openly the FBI in conversations in 1998. So this whole thing is only a political trial, and that, that we have to, to see. So they have not received, to this day, a fair trial. They have not been given humane uh, treatment, and the final thing, of course, is the continued punishment of them by not even allowing them to have what is normally accepted for anyone with a long prison term to meet members of their family. So that's what I'll say as a, a little bit longer presentation than you would have asked. Thank you much, thank you. Uh, well, I, I thought we'd, we'd go back to some of the points that, that you to raise. I don't think you, you missed any, any point, but I'll just try to go in depth on this point that you did with us. First of all, I'd like to ask you, Kenneth, um, could you tell us something about the, the definition of terrorist acts? Uh, is there such a definition, and if so, how does it, how does it go, so to speak? Well, there are several definitions of terrorism. Amongst one you, you showed me before this meeting, which is in, included in the Swedish law, and which is an attempt to copy. The European uh, Union has tried to define terrorism and in my opinion, failed so far. But basically, the definition of terrorism is supposed to be have responsibility for a terrorist act. So on the one hand, you have people who are attacking Cuba, according to this so-called definition of terrorism. And on the other hand, you have some people who are trying to prevent it. Now, I don't see anything in there in the activity of the Cuban Five which was directed against the United States. There was a, a, an accusation, since one of them happened to work at a naval base, that maybe they were spying on whether the United States was preparing a military attack on Cuba. This, I don't know. They have no, they have never were able to produce any evidence to, the, uh, 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 to that extent that, that they should have been trying to do that. But I can imagine that if they had discovered a military buildup aimed at Cuba that they might very well have informed the Cubans about it. But so what? I mean, they admitted that they were trying to protect Cuba. That, that's what they were convicted of. But they were convicted of two other crimes, which were not, there is no evidence. They admitted to being agents of the Cuban government. Yes, they admitted that. But they denied spying on the United States and against the United States interests were trying to change anything in the United States, and they definitely, Hernandez definitely denied having any complicity in the death of these pilots. The Cubans had warned these people that they should stop flying or incurring on, sweep, uh, on Cuban airspace 
And they claim that they attacked the planes in Cuban airspace. The Americans claim that they were shot down over international territory. In any case, they had definitely been in Cuban airspace. So, and they had been warned. Was that the answer you want? Definitely. It was, it was, thank you very much. And I would also think it to, to follow up a question. Because uh, you, you mentioned that obviously there, there are groups in, in Miami who, who uh, uh, are, are active in certain terrorist acts, according to the definition that you just mentioned. Now, th this claim, so to speak, is also uh, that there is a report that, that Ilma just mentioned that there are. 3,000 Cubans who died. Uh, I wanted you to, to answer whether th this report, is it, is it contested? Is it something that's under debate? Or what's the, what's the status of that report? Oh, no, no, no. It's not, not under any debate. It's, it's, it's actual uh, numbers of people that have died out of these terrorist attacks. And the 2099, they say, is actual the people that have been disabled uh, because of this terrorist attack against Cuba, talking about bombs, I'm talking about diseases, because they also have um, the hemorrhagic dengue uh, was uh, spread with these airplanes in Cuba, and we still fight that that uh, illness. So, uh, we have it under control completely, but it has uh, cost the, the life of 111 kids, and, uh, and, and we still um, spend, Cuba spends uh, millions of dollars each year trying to buy the necessary equipment and, uh, and medicine to prevent this hemorrhagic from going on 